Hello, Imagen 300. Uh, this is Dr. Wheeler here. We're going to talk about your first lab view exercise. So for this first exercise, I thought I would give you guys um, a bit of a walkthrough on how to complete the exercise just for the first one so you can get familiar with how lab view works and what lab view is and sort of what your workflow is when you are creating a lab view VI. Um, so here's the assignment prompt. So we need to create a lab view VI that multiplies two numbers together and shows the result on the front panel. We want the user to be able to input those two numbers and we want to use some labels and comments to make the VI look nice and we can document how the VI works. Um, when we're done, we'll take a screenshot and upload the VI and that screenshot to uh, Canvas to get credit for your assignment. So let's jump over to LabVIEW and we'll kind of go through this step by step so you guys can get familiar with how LabVIEW works. All right, so I'm going to open up LabVIEW. When you first start LabVIEW, you should get a screen that looks kind of like this, right? Uh, might be slightly different in a newer version of LabVIEW, but it should be the same uh, sort of basic setup here. So this is a good time to talk about what LabVIEW actually is and why we use it. So LabVIEW is a full programming language that allows you to create uh, programs which are called VIs or virtual instruments in LabVIEW. So LabVIEW was created because uh, we wanted software that was really easy to get to talk to hardware. And that is what LabVIEW is designed with in mind. So LabVIEW is designed to be able to control hardware, collect data, and process that data really easily. Um, and the programs that you make look kind of like a benchtop instrument. That's why they're called virtual instruments. So when we talk about making a VI in LabVIEW, that's essentially what we're talking about, is just writing a program that does some sort of specific task. So to start off making a VI, when you come to your splash screen here, let's go File, and we'll do a new VI and you're immediately going to get these two windows that pop up. Let's bring them over to the side here. There we go. All right. And we're done fumbling around with the window, so let's let's jump into the actual uh, meat of this exercise here. So these two windows are going to pop up. The first one over here on the right with this, this gray checker mark, that's the front panel. All right, so the front panel is what the user is going to interact with while the VI is running. So over here, we can have inputs and outputs. We can display data to the user. We can collect input from the user. Um, all that's going to happen over here on the front panel. On the left-hand side over here, we have this white space that we call the block diagram. All right, and the block diagram is where all of the logic behind the VI happens. So this is what's going on inside of the computer. This is where we set behaviors. Uh, we can do mathematical equations over here in the block diagram, and we can make the actual VI work and, and tell, it, tell it how to use all of the uh, inputs and outputs on the front panel. Okay, so to do this, um, we're asked we need to input two numbers, multiply them together, and display the result to the user. So I think the easiest way to start off with this is we will go ahead and we'll add our inputs and outputs to the front panel, um, and then we can wire up the logic for this also. All right, so when you go and you want to um, add an element to your LabVIEW VI, the easiest way to do that is to just go to the appropriate window and right click. So if we want to add an input and output, we could go over to the front panel, right click, and you'll bring up a menu. If you wanted to add some logic to your program, you go to the block diagram and right click over there. And it brings up a similar menu, but you notice the options are actually different between the two of those. So we'll play with the block diagram here in a second. But for right now, let's go and add our inputs and outputs. So I'm going to right click. We have several different options of different types of inputs and outputs we can do here. So there's these uh, different folders are called palettes, which are just collections of different types of tools or elements that you can add to your VI. So the numeric palette is all the inputs and outputs of how you can input numbers into the machine. You can have a Boolean palette. So if you want an on off state, like a button, or you want to have a light that turns on and off, depending on different conditions in the VI, you can find it there. There's also things for like strings, if you want to input information that way, arrays, there's graphs, um, all sorts of good stuff that we'll be using later on in the class. But for now, we're just looking to input two numbers and output one number. So let's go to the numeric palette. 
and I'm going to grab a numeric control. So in LabVIEW, our inputs are called controls and our outputs are called indicators. All right, so the control allows the user to input some sort of information into the VI and the indicator is going to take some sort of, of result and display that to the user on the front panel. So that's your output is the indicator. All right, so I've dropped down our first numeric control where we can introduce our first number. And uh, you can see I've got a block over here in the block diagram now. That's where I'll use get information from the front panel and use it to send it to the logic in our VI. Um, for now, let's go ahead and let's label this. So we're multiplying two numbers together. I'm gonna call the first number X. All right, so we can change the label and it changes the label over here in the block diagram. So it kind of self documents um, itself on how uh, we can actually, so we know what element goes to what control in the block diagram. Um, it's a nice feature of LabVIEW. Next thing is we need to add our second number. So we'll do our second numeric control. We'll call that one Y. And then we need a way to display the result of X times Y back to the user. So that's gonna be an indicator. So instead of grabbing the numeric control over here, I'm gonna grab the numeric indicator and we'll call this X times Y. All right, and that's how uh, we can put those elements on the front panel. And you'll see that we've got all of these blocks. Each of these elements has a corresponding block in the block diagram um, where we can tell the VI how we get from X and Y to X times Y. Right. So you notice this is a little bit different than if you've done some text-based programming before. In a text-based programming language, you write your instructions out as text, um, and usually the computer starts at the top of your uh, document with all that those text instructions in it, and it runs line by line through this sequentially until it gets to the end of the uh, program. In LabVIEW, we actually draw the program. So it's more like drawing a flowchart um, that you might have done when you're setting out your programming language before, but that's how you actually make the VI. Um, so here what, in the block diagram is we can add a multiplication block to tell LabVIEW to take X and Y and multiply them together and then display the result in this indicator. So the way we can go about doing that is if we right click here, um, we get our different palettes. So we can get programming structures, so things like while loops, for loops, uh, case structures we can set out here. There's tools for working with arrays. Um, there's cluster class and variant, which is kind of like a, like, like a data structure in other programming languages. And we have our numeric palette. All right, so the numeric palette is where we get our, our sort of basic mathematical operators. And under the numeric palette, you notice we've add, subtract, and multiply. So in our case, we want this multiplication block. We can grab that and we drop it in our block diagram. And we see that this block has some terminals where we can take numbers and we can input them into the block and then take the result and send those to different parts of the VI. So the way we send information from one place to another in the block diagram is with a wire. All right, so we're actually gonna wire these together and the wire tells LabVIEW to take the value from the control and send it to somewhere else in the block diagram. So we can take this terminal here, you see my cursor changes to the spool of wire. Click there and click to the X value here on the multiplication block. And now whatever value my user inputs into X is going to go to the multiplication block here. So we could do the same thing for Y and then we can take the result and wire that to X times Y, right? And that's how we can set up the logic in our LabVIEW VI. So this is actually ready to go here. Um, this, this VI will now actually run if we wanted it to. So we could come over to our front panel. We could enter a couple of numbers here. So let's say we want to multiply two times two. And we, we're ready to try running our VI. So the way we go about doing that is we need to use some of these tools that are up here at the top of the LabVIEW programming environment. So you notice you get copies of the tools on both the block diagram or the front panel. You can use either of those uh, to run your VI. And the 
few few tools we have up here. We have the run button, which will actually run our VI. Run continuously, which will essentially put this inside of a while loop and make it run over and over again. Uh, we tend not to use that button. It's usually much easier just to manually put in the while loop in our program if we need it and control it that way. We have an abort button. So uh, if your program gets stuck um, and you can't get it to stop on its own, you can hit that button and it'll just stop whatever's running. And you can also pause execution of the VI uh, partway through if you need to also. So those are our major controls here. If we hit run, it's gonna prompt us to save. Oh, it didn't actually this time. So we've taken two and two, and now our indicator is uh, showing us that the result is four. So I can come over here, change my Y value, run that again. And now we have two times three is six. So we've got our basic VI running. Now the assignment prompt asks us to use uh, labels and some text comments to help document our um, VI. So we, we've already done the labels a little bit. We can change these up here. If we wanted to, we can make the font bigger by selecting this, this font menu up here. We can change the size. Let's say we wanna make this really big. Can do that, right? Um, and that's one way that we can can do documentation on the front panel and help customize the look of our, our front panel. If we wanted to document our block diagram, so this block diagram is very simple, but some of them are much more complicated. As you your VI gets more complicated, it's really helpful to have labels in the block diagram that tell you uh, what's going on inside of the block diagram and what values are contained where and what different parts of the block diagram actually do. You can add comments just by double clicking anywhere in this white space. So if I want to label this block here and I want to put a little text label that'll float above it, I just double click there and I get a comment. And we can say that we're multiplying X times Y at this step and we can label different parts of our block diagram that way. You can also add labels to individual wires or blocks by generally right-clicking on them. If you want to open, here we go. And if you go to visible items and select label, that will add a visible label here. So I can actually label this wire as x times y. And the cool thing about adding a label that way is that label will move around. So as I move this block around and the, the wire moves around also, the label stays with it, right? So these text comments are fixed in the block diagram. So if I move this multiplication block around, you see the text comment stays where it's at, but the label on the wire will actually follow the wire around as I move it in the block diagram, which can be a useful feature to have um, if you're doing uh, more sub, some more substantial editing of the block diagram. It can be nice to have that label follow around um, so you don't have to manually move all of your comments that way. All right, so that's the basics of how um, we can set up a VI, but I think we could go a little bit farther with this and, and make this look a little bit fancier. Um, so this is just a basic text text box output for our number where it just shows the numeral of the value that's represented but there's a lot of options of ways that we can output a number to a user we could have like a gauge or maybe a thermometer that fills up um, as the value changes so let's let's try something a little bit fancier and more fun um, the way we can change what's in here is if we go to replace we can then select a different type of indicator so let's try a thermometer. That seems like a fun sort of uh, thing to have here on our front panel. So you can change the size of this. If you go over, stretch it out, you can move that around. Label is wanting to sit right on top of it, but we should be able to drag that. There we go, move that out of the way. And now if I run this VI, the level in the thermometer will change as I change these values here. So you can have a different way of displaying data out to the user. 
In the same way, you can also change your, your inputs to be different types of, of inputs for the user also. So in, instead of entering the number into this little box, we could have a, a different type of input. So I'm gonna use the replace, go to the numeric palette again, and we could have things like a knob. Make that a little bigger. And we can rotate this knob around. and input different numbers that way. You can also change the range on here. So you notice that right now my knob only allows me to enter numbers between zero and 10. But if I wanted bigger numbers, you just click on the, the limit here and let's add a zero and it'll rescale that axis for us. So now I can enter any number between zero and 100. Um, you can do the same thing at the lower limit. So I could just say, go to negative 100 now zero's in the center here, and I can do negative numbers also. There we go, we've gone off the scale on our uh, temperature reading there, so we might have to increase this a little bit. Let's make this go up to 500. And we can adjust our VI that way. All right, so that's uh, some of the different options that we have there. Um, one of the other things that we could do here is it would be really cool if this would update in real time, right? So the way we would do that is we'd want our VI to be continuously running. So it's always reading the value off of the front panel, doing that multiplication operation and then displaying the, the result to a user. So the way we would implement that is to have a while loop running. So the uh, the VI is always running until we tell it to stop, and it's always updating those values. And the way that we can do that in LabVIEW is we, if we go to the block diagram, you can add a while loop. And this is where we start to see some more of this uh, sort of graphical um, programming and why it's pretty cool is in, in MATLAB we or Arduino or other text-based languages, you have to pay really close attention to what's inside of the loop versus what's outside of the loop. In LabVIEW, when you put something inside of a loop, you're drawing a box that represents the loop and everything that's in that box is inside of the loop. So it's very um, literally inside of the loop. So I'm just gonna draw my while loop around here. Um, the while loop always needs a condition that tells it when to stop. And the easiest way to do that is to go to this little terminal here. So when this terminal gets a true value, that's what stops the loop. And if we right click on that, I'm gonna do create control and it automatically generates a stop button. So on my front panel, a little button has popped up that will stop the VI from running any further. So now when I run my VI, the knob is updating values in real time. So this used to be very powerful when we're doing things like data collection, because you can have it continuously collecting data and displaying um, that process data back to the user on the front panel. You can see where this would be uh, really useful. Now this is still running, so if I want this to stop, just come up here and hit the stop button, right? And that's what's gonna um, stop our VI. So that is a basic introduction to LabVIEW and how you use the LabVIEW programming environment. Um, and that should get you through your first LabVIEW exercise. Now there's a whole series of exercises that come after this that will help you um, get more familiar with programming in LabVIEW and then we'll roll into next week in class. We'll get more hands-on with LabVIEW and we'll start actually controlling instruments with it. Um, so hopefully you'll find that helpful. As, as always, if you have any trouble, just stop by office hours or class and we'll be happy to help you out and make sure you get comfortable working with LabVIEW. Uh, thanks, guys. Have fun programming in LabVIEW.